I'm in the wardrobe room of Gossip Girl with Georgina, Vanessa, Blair, Jenny surrounded by clothes, waiting to have a great chat with Eric Damon, genius costume designer who puts this all together and brings all of these characters to life. Stay tuned. Costume designer Eric Damon is the master behind the trend-setting looks on the hit series Gossip Girl. He grew up a long way from the Upper East Side of New York in rural Michigan. As a teen, Eric moved to Paris, where he was discovered as a model by legendary photographer Steven Meisel. Eric's love for fashion then took him to New York, where he's been styling and designing for film and television ever since. Now Eric's written a book, so he can share his incredible knowledge of beauty, style, and trends with the rest of us. I feel like I just woke up in heaven to be sitting with the costume genius, Mr. Eric Damon, who was the assistant to the great Pat Field in Sex and the City, and actually personally and singularly responsible for all of the costumes that have become truly pop culture phenomenons on Gossip Girl. And we're sitting in where every single fitting happens here. This is the so, magic room. This is the magic room. Yes. So tell me about the magic room. The magic room is, you know, our little piece of kind of heaven away from the set and there are all the madness that goes on downstairs. Like we're in Long Island City, right, Silver Cup Studios. This is where everything is kind of built, which is great for me because it's my old stomping ground. Like my studio when I worked with Pat was right next door, so coming back here was kind of like a homecoming for me in a way and it kind of felt great to come back to it and have it kind of be my own. And it's been, you know, a very exciting run, but, you know, this is where we do all the fittings. This, this is, where, is we where it happens. This is where it all so happens. So Serena, Blair, Serena, Chuck, they Blair, sit Chuck in this Bass room. Come in here, they and they get, get dressed in here, and they become, and <laughs> you know, they put on the beautiful clothes that everyone loves in here, and, you know, this is where we end up making all the outfits and kind of, you know, doing all the accessories and making sure that everything works and everything is like, you know, do all the little fittings, the nips and tucks that it all takes to make them look as smashing as they do on TV. Can we just have a look around the room? I'm not we leaving can. here unless you walk me through a few of the future looks here. So am I walking into an episode of Gossip Girl right here? You're walking into a closet of Gossip Girl, of mm. upcoming fashions that haven't yet been filmed or seen. I'm getting chilly. Tell things. me what's happening here. Uh, I pulled a couple of things from Serena and Blair's closet kind of represent who they are and where we're going with their characters. And this is, you know, kind of a perfectly iconic Serena Vanderwoodson miniskirt, the embellishment, the color. You know, we love to use these kind of like rich, warm jewel tones on her kind of mixed with like all these like fleshy tones and cosmetic neutrals we've been seeing a lot I of. love it. So she'll look through this with you mm -hmm. when you do a fitting. Oh, this top is fantastic. She'll do something very similar to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, you know, I want to wear this. I want to wear this. I want to wear this with. Do I wear the mini skirt? Do I wear leggings? Do I wear jeans? And just kind of go through the whole process. So it's just like getting dressed in the morning like anybody else does. You'd go through your closet and be like, oh, do I have a cocktail event to go to tonight? I feel tonight? Blair here. Is this a Blair dress? It actually, or could go either I way. I think it could go either way depending on how it's accessorized. I feel like color-wise, it goes a little. It, it's a little more Blair, but the shape of it is a little more Serena. So you'll but. dress them. You'll put, you know, Blake. Because let's talk to her like she's a human being. Yes. So you'll put Blake Lively put in Blake the skirt. In this. To become Serena, and will you guys just play yeah. and throw we'll in all play. the jewelry? There's a big mirror behind us, and we just kind of, you know, it's just like playing dress up. It's really kind of, it is. It's, it's an it's ideal kind of fantasy world. It's so much fun. That's why I keep going on about it. It's like fashion should just be fun. It's entertainment, and it's just it's supposed to meant to make people feel great and have a good time. But it's a business, and, and you're a business. so organized. You know every single piece. I know every. I have a really amazing team of young ladies that work with me out in the office that keep everything cataloged and photographed. And so when you take things from the wall and you're trying to leave, there's sirens that will go off. Just to let you know. Oh, all right. I have no pockets <laughs> now, Eric. Don't you think that's a great tip for especially the young girls out there? They can catalog their own wardrobe. Keep it organized, keep it organized. Something else you know, I talk about in the book is like how to arrange your closet and your, you know, everything. You, if you can't see it, then you're not gonna be able to wear it and you're not gonna be able to have fun with it, I think. So know keeping, what you own. Know what you own, have it, you know, however you need to do it for yourself. We do it here at the shop and kind of how I like to do it is like, we do it by colors, by shapes. It's like short sleeve shirts from white to yellow to red to I blue think and keep owning it, it by classification. Those are my closets, the skirts, the pants, the jacket. Yeah. And just, you know, everything is time management. What I think could be a great tip also is, you know, push pin, little nails, ask your parents first, especially yeah. if you're at home and you live with other people that pay the rent. But it's a great you know, wallpaper. You know, it's, it's a, a great, great wallpaper. Piece. 
a necklace wall. Does it get better than this? I, you know, well, there's a shoe and bag wall out there, which, you know, <laughs> you know see. So I don't know if it gets better, but there's just as, you know, good outside. I could be locked in this room. If you don't <laughs> find me, if I don't come home to feed the child, I'm here. Okay, Definitely. now just talk to me about the image wall. This is what we call the inspiration kind of mood wall, and it's something that kind of changes Hi, by, yeah, there's Chuck Bass inspiration. Right so what tent. happens here? This, this is, is what you're feeling? Like a, yeah, it's what we're feeling. It's, uh, it's me, it's my assistants, everyone gets to, you know, if they find an image that they think is apropos to what's going on this season, or the trends, or feels very Blair Waldorf appropriate, they have to come in and it's kind of, it's a play wall. And I think it's very important to have inspirations, be it, you know, pictures from magazines, it's ads, it's you know pictures from movies, it's everything you see around you that is inspiration. Well, what I find amazing, and you're so humble, is that, don't kid yourself, okay, you've created a pop culture phenomenon. You have taken fashion, made it a big business, and inspired what's happening editorially in the magazines. So that's what I find, you know, so interesting, is that art and life and everything that's... you've seen that's inspired you, you've made iconic right. on the show, and other people are taking those images and putting them out there for the world to see. Yeah. And it's this whole kind of creative factory. It's all creative and factory. And I'm staying. I'm staying She's here. She's staying. So now I have to get to your book. You know you want it. Style, inspiration, confidence. confidence. I have to tell you something. For someone who's been in fashion for 23 years, I learned many a thing. Anybody that gets this book, and we don't push things on this <laughs> show, this is a great this. tool. This is a feel-good piece of work and you'll have fun, there's lots of pictures, it's an easy read, and you can go back to it all the time to get it. But tell me about it's a great, it. You had, actually, when we were talking earlier, you said it would be like a great textbook for FIT It would be a great textbook in FIT or fashion or any fashion school. That's kind of what I wanted to create when I was approached by the publishing house. To, they were like, oh, we wanted you to do this fashion book, and I didn't want it just to be like some style guide or my insider tips. I really wanted to um, use everything that I've learned to be able to help women build confidence through clothing and through feeling better about the shape that they don't necessarily have, know how to do or what actually goes on behind the scenes. Like every single piece of clothing that is seen on television is completely tailored to fit the person's body. And you know, I think it's important. And you, you talk can... about tailoring. A tailor, whether it's your aunt, whether it's the man down the street, it could be your best friend. Yeah, whether it's you at know, the a needle and thread is your best friend. Yeah. yeah. Now, 20% fashion, 80% confidence. Okay, talk to me about that I ratio. Say, yeah, that's you know one of my big mantras. I always say, you know, confidence is a girl's best accessory. There's nothing better, you know, a woman never looks better than if she feels confident in what she's wearing and can just go into a room glowing. I think, you know, what I wanted to do with the book is help women build their confidence and build, you know, something that they can look at and be like, oh, I don't feel right about this pant length. And I can go look at the book and be like, oh, it's maybe the, this pant length. And even if that one little thing makes them feel more confident in themselves and their choices, then I've done what I set out to do. And I think that's you know, the most important part of it. And, you know, I think fashion is so built up these days. And it's, you know, we see so many, like, red carpet shows where they're dissing people and everyone's right. just saying it's all so negative and I think it's fashion is there to be fun it's just part of being it's entertainment you know, it's entertainment and that's you know that's we want it to be a p fun positive experience helping people build confidence and you know giving back in some whatever way that I can and helping women understand that they can just feel like, confident about themselves like you already that's my biggest <laughs> mantra and, you know with luck and privilege also comes responsibility and Absolutely. I think it's very important to do whatever I can to help build women up instead of breaking them down so if you were giving someone, you know, the cheat sheet, the Eric Damon, you know you want a cheat sheet, what would the tips be? Uh, my first big tip is like, don't buy into seasonal trends. Like everyone wants the season's trendiest thing. And it's something that you don't have to go to the big designer houses to spend right. lots of money on. It's something that you can get at the Charlotte Russes or the Forever 21s. You the talk H &Ms. about investments. I think it's all about an investment purchase. If you want, if you have an extra, you know, whatever it is for your financial, intake if it's like 200 bucks and you have 200 dollars to spend on a really great bag then go spend it on a you know great bag that's going to take you for the next 10 years don't spend it on a great bag that you've seen on the runway or i've seen in all the editorial or tons of random stuff just tons of random stuff so it doesn't you know just really important to have you know some great solid pieces like a burberry trench a really great handbag a great pair of sunglasses will take you a long way jewelry what's a go-to piece of jewelry that really no woman no girl could live without i feel like a really great pair of diamond studs it's just like it'll just we use them a lot on the show and that's it just gives why that we call perfect them the best little friend. Piece. Yeah. Just like and that. they don't have to be real. They don't have to be real. We don't mm. they are not real on the show. There's really, right. you know, they should look really nice and have you a great sparkle to, to them. Gray. But you know, Swarovski makes some you know amazing replicas and it's just as long as it has that sparkle and just like just a little touch of light on your face and it's just like having your own. So a little light next you. to the face. Little light next to the face. And really how about important. a bottom, a jean, a legging? 
I think yeah, finding finding right the right pair of jeans for yourself, for your body, for your shape, for your style is also key. I talk about you know I have all the I have kind of delineation of all the different kind of jeans, like from boot cut to skinny to ultra skinny to. You're very capri. clear with not everything is for every body or every body type. It is, and I think that's what's so you know emancipating for women is that you know what, just because you wear a skinny jean, it's not about being skinny. You know, nope. if you're pear shaped and you talk, you talk about the different body types, and there's something for everyone to identify with. On this show, everyone's you know perfect and beautiful and has a great shape. But I've worked on a lot of other films with a lot of actresses and actors that do not have perfect shapes, and you want to get in there and like help them look as good as they can. Accentuate and I think the positive. Accentuate positives. the positive, exactly. What's been a don't for you? Uh, maybe I should have rethought that. Any looks on Gossip Girl? Um, I don't have. Any regrets about any of the looks on Gossip Girl? I was just saying, confidence. I, it's about confidence, but I also feel like it's all, like they're all kind of like my children. So I'm like, oh, that, that's not the redheaded stepchild. I have, you know, I really feel good about all of them. I've made the decisions. You know, sometimes they get, you know, raspberried on the internet or people talk badly right. about them, and that's all right. What if they don't love what you put them in? What do you do? The actors? Yeah. So Leighton comes in today. I know you have fittings all day in this very room. In this room, very room. And you put her in. A dress and she's like mm, I don't feel right here I don't like the color like do you then have that conversation with the actors? That is, it's rare but I we it happens and when it does happen you know like I said I'm only there as a tool for them and I want them to look great and feel great and be able to be you know the best Blair Waldorf she can be but everything that's in the room I have selected as well you know I went out and selected the 15 dresses that are in front of her so if she's the first one she doesn't like the, the second one or the third so one she will. So it's about options. It's about options. But you can incorporate that in your own wardrobe. Definitely. You know when you're going shopping and you're on the internet you don't have to you can add to bag and not check out. Yes. You know that's how I shop online. Do you recommend that? I mean, I go shopping online. I definitely online. Say, you know, make your shopping bag bigger than you would normally and then right. at the end of it kind of go through it and then also maybe take a beat and, and like edit. think about what's about in editing. your closet and what that's going to go with or why you're getting that piece or why you're attracted to it. I think there's a, you know, take a beat. Don't, you know, impulse buys are the worst. Do you shop online? I personally or uh, do you we use do the a lot. Of, we use tool? yes. We use here in the show. We use the internet as a tool all the time. We're shopping online all the time. We were just actually we just did a fitting with Blake yesterday, and we were on the line with her looking for something on, on Shopbop. So you sat there and with Guild Blake Group Lively and, on Guilt Group on Shopbop at the computer, creating looks or getting inspiration. Yeah, getting in, like if there was a certain kind of you know if there's an article missing from an outfit, you're like oh it's like oh maybe we could look it up online. So let's find it and order it, and it'll be here next week. And, and, you know, also, it's a great tool. It's really the internet. I is agree. A, it's, you know, it's a really amazing tool. How did we get to Sex in the City? We got to Sex in the City from. That's a lot of luck. That was a lot of luck, but I actually mm -hmm. knew Patricia in Paris. I would buy her clothing collection, the Pet Field collection. We'd right. buy it. I'd buy it for the store. And when I was flying back and forth to New York, I'd actually pick up the clothes from her store, from her, bring it back to my the store I was working with in Paris, and. So I knew her, you know, kind of back in the day when I was, you know, just kind of and starting out. And had the show as a, started like, already? The show had not started at all. Wow. Not at all. Pat was doing like movies in Miami and was not. She was not the Patricia Field of Carrie Bradshaw yet, um, but she was, you know, she was still Patricia Field and fabulous. And, yeah. But we definitely had a link prior to that. So you have the Emmy that you were a and part then, of for Sex in the City, mm -hmm. and then Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl. Uh, so tell me about the process. You read the pilot. I read the script for the pilot. You, I was familiar with the books because you were you know, familiar I'm, with the books. Love myself a good teen girl novel. Love a teen girl novel. So, <laughs> you're reading about Serena. You're reading about Blair. You're reading about Chuck, mm -hmm. and on and on and on. And did you immediately have images in I your immediate, head? Immediately, it's like a flash forward in time or something. It's like going through a visual tunnel. Now, had they reading. casted it yet? No, no, not at all. So you only had the image in your I mind. I only had images that I was... You didn't have Blake was, Lively no, or Leighton no, or Anna, none all. of them. Nobody was cast. You have the images, okay. Let me give Blair a headband. Let me always, you know, rock Serena in this yes. sexy dress. Let's dandify Chuck Bass. Exactly. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams that Gossip Girl, after you won the Emmy for Sex and the City, like round two would be something that is a pop culture phenomenon? I mean, this is no, historic. It did not, you know. I didn't think it was a means to an end to create this, you know, kind of moment in time and moment in pop culture. Of course, I've, you know, I've always been kind of obsessed with pop culture. So actually, to be influencing it, be a part of it, I feel like it's luck and privilege. But I've also feel it's like skill. I've honed a craft at this point that it's nice that I can go back to my 
fashion backgrounds of when I was a stylist mm -hmm. to my background as a costume designer and kind of make all these worlds meld together. They are costumes, but you don't costumes. want them to look as if they're at a costume party. Exactly. You want the audience to believe these are real people. Ex yes. And that's what you've done so successfully. Yes, they're amazing actors, phenomenal talents, but I great was reading in, great to look at, major objects yeah. of desire, the men and the women. All of them. So who was your easiest character and who was your most difficult? Um, I don't know if any of it was either overly easy or overly difficult. I, th I think I kind of think about it almost Did like a school. Did you see any of like, them right like out? Homework. Yeah. I, yeah, for Blair, I was like, oh, imagining like a modern day Jackie Onassis or a modern day Audrey Hepburn and kind of had old Hollywood glamour meets East Coast sophistication in my head. Whereas when I was reading about Serena, I was thinking immediately, it was pretty much immediate Kate Moss. Like that tousled, really? nonchalance, always looks fantastic. But you know, it takes hours to get ready even though it's just something she just threw on. And I've read that Chuck Bass is your favorite character to dress. He is my favorite character to dress. Just because I think to take a man and make him into this, you know, almost kind of Quentin Crisp, dandy, dandy. dandified, Savile Row, kind of yeah. old, same thing, it goes back to old high. I love who's old so films, young. who's so young, has so much money and influence. Do you think that that's inspiring men to dress better, turn it up a notch? I definitely think so. I've definitely from my travels through the country and just being around in New York City, you definitely see guys in suits and bow ties and it's definitely, even like in advertising and marketing, you really, it's gone to a really clean great- Clean is cool. Clean is cool. You know, the old idea of what the metrosexual was and like the bad striped shirts and the over embellished jeans. Like, and you know what, that's you know, such that's a great just, point because he is so well put together. He is so truly coiffed and he's straight as an arrow. Yeah, he's straight over as an arrow. straight. I think that's, I think that's why it resonates so well with the guys is he's like, you know, he's, in pink he's suits down and, and dirty, ascots, but very straight. But he's also like sipping bourbon and has strippers on around him all the time. So exactly. you know, it's like this great. You know, he, that's why I enjoy it so much. It is this kind of like play with two worlds and yeah, kind it's of that express. Dichotomy and completely. also, you know, can give guys confidence to be like, oh, I can look great in a suit, and I don't look like some hedge fund Banker. dude or banker yeah, yeah. or my dad or you know, it's just you know. No, of, he doesn't look like he's playing dress up. He's, no. He's you know, really believable. And he's some guys would have unpredictably sexy. He is very... Un he's sinister, but in such a seductive exactly. the way. Exactly, sexy. I mean, I'm 43 years old. I could see, you know, going out for dinner with him or going, yeah, you know, I'm... sorry, Mitchell, on a date with him. And what's so interesting here is that when we look at fashion icons, when we look at, you know, people, that have basically shaken up the industry and created brands of themselves. You see it mostly in women. What you've done here so successfully that I think is going to be, as I keep saying, historic, iconic, is you've done it for the men. So where do you get these clothes from? Are yeah, people throwing clothes at you? Please yeah, put would, our stuff on the girls, on the guys. I wouldn't say throwing. People are, you know, very interested in having their, <laughs> having their wares shown on the show. Um, but it's a nice, you know, also it's a great, you know, changed from the beginning when we were doing the pilot and we were doing season one it was still it was very hard to get the th certain things you know from certain designers and you know the budget is, is you know not gigantic it's, there's no way we could do this show with on the budget that I have it's great that all these people are so um, interested and want to be a part of it that you know it really helps me be able to create this universe that we're seeing and like create this whole so they loan fashion. you the clothes a lot of it is loan it's probably I would say it's like 60 40. 60% of it is on loan, and 40% of it we actually buy. Okay, between us new best friends, do they get to keep any of it? They do not. But they will come in, like Blake will come in, and she, if she loves a Chanel bag or loves a Chloe jacket, she will, you know, take a picture of the hand tag, send it to her assistant, and then they will figure it out. But the ones that we have here on the show, it is all, it's for the show, and, you know, if we purchase it, it goes into the closet in the back and they go into dead costumes and they go. And I can always do a little, you know, borrow return. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely some borrow return. You know, the girls are down there working all day. If they have to go to an event at night, they're more than welcome to come up and borrow a piece of clothing or a pair of shoes or I can help them accessorize. The designers love it. Yeah, and that's all, you know, that's all part of it. So how much have you influenced the talent in their own personal lives and their own style and the way they dress? I don't know if I'd say necessarily influence. I think there's been more of an education that you know they were very young and they didn't have access to the fashions that they've been working with on the show and I was kind of in a way almost like their fashion professor. So you're a teacher. Kind of, I'm a teacher. I think you know in a way uh, maybe that sounds cheesy but I feel like I really it's not cheesy. you know given them the tools like but any you great teacher would. celebrated if, what they came with yeah. and you took them from really good to really great. Yeah. When I was reading the foreword to your book which Leighton Meester wrote. Yes. And it was 
above all very kind. It was very real because she was talking about, you know, studying her lines and knowing who Blair was. But the second that she gets into costume, she is Blair. She comes. And I think that is why the show is so successful because you have given them the tools to not only portray the character, to be the character. That's, you know, that is, when it comes down to it, my job is not to create pop culture. It is to help them create the most amazing Blair Waldorf she can be in this scene. Like if it's, a, you know, a, a romantic scene and she's with Chuck, you want that to kind of harmonize through the clothing and not, you know, you don't want the clothing to wear them. You want it to be a part of what they're trying to create. And when it comes down to it, as a costume designer, I'm just here to give them the tools to create those moments. But for girls, you know, who behave like women, who live a life that 99.999% of the world will never know, will never have. You haven't made us hate them with all this fashion. Yes. You know, I know you've said in your book and you've said in many interviews that you know you acknowledge the fact that you're creating this fantasy. You don't want anybody to feel bad because they can't have that look. Right. So now you're the style director of Charlotte Russe, which is really you know the teenage factory where girls can get dressed in these fantasy ways and afford them, so tell yes. me about that. It was really a great experience. They approached me and I thought, this is a really great way to kind of give back and kind of open up this amazing world to all these girls across America that are the girls that are the fans that have like helped build the Gossip World brand and to be able to give them something, whether, you know, it's not actual Gossip World, but it's something that I can endorse and be a part of and show them that, oh, Well, you don't want to give real people costumes. No. You want to give them the same kind of energy, right? Yeah, and I want to give them the tools to make themselves feel like they're a part of this world. My next step with Charlotte Russe, they asked me to design a capsule collection of party dresses for them. Wow. It was really exciting. It was I a great, like, I feel prom like, happening in May. Prom, I just yeah. finished <laughs> designing prom. It's happening in May. So in May, you'll be able to get Eric Damon for Charlotte Russe prom dresses. For someone who designs dresses, has a new collection coming out, works like crazy, is doing fittings, is writing books. You look very good, and you know what? Well, you're you. really you look nice. You bad yourself. Thank you. But you're a very nice man, because you've created this fantasy on Gossip Girl that people enjoy, but you took the time to give everybody a little piece of what the Blairs and the Serenas, you know, have. And I think that's just fabulous. Well, Eric, thank you. It was so nice My to pleasure. meet you. And good luck this season. Thank you very much. It'll be a great season. I just had the best time with Eric Damon. He's so interesting. He's a teacher. He's a costume designer extraordinaire. I don't want to leave him, and I don't want to leave Serena and the sequins. This, to me, is heaven. <laughs>